Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. There are times that I shake my head and think, man, the human race, we're not going to make it. So in this box is a saw that I've been wanting for quite some time. Uh, it'll serve in one of our our cut competitions, that we, you know, next time I get my stuff together. But I'm just happy that it made it here. UPS dropped it off today. Do you, what do you think that is? I don't know. What is that? Sorry for that sudden movement. I thought there was some more on the bottom. Maybe there isn't. But this is how this box arrived. I've already cut this tape. But it still looks exactly the same. Oh, well, what do we have here? Okay. There's the bar and chain. Well, I guess I'm glad that it made it here. Obviously, it was beating against the top of that box. Completely blew that one apart. You know, you've got teeth right here. A little thin wrap of plastic ain't going to cut it. What else do we have in here? Oh, that's nice. That's real nice. I guess now I know why it was bleeding through. I don't know. Get you guys on the stand here, and then I'll start uh, unboxing the rest of this. But damn, I don't know why it is so hard to drain fuel and oil from a saw before you ship it. Just doesn't compute for me. I'm say I'm I'm happy that it made it at this point. thrown into some quarantine somewhere. Oh yeah. I mean, look at this. It's an oil stain. How? Oh, but you know, there was an attempt. Because, you know, on the bottom of the box, here's your oil soaker upper pad. Alright. I'll quit bitching and open this up. Although I'm assuming that's the bottom. But I don't know. I honestly don't know where to open this from. So we'll just go for it. Yep, that was the bottom. And you know, to be fair, there was an attempt here. It just wasn't a good attempt. The saw is in a plastic bag, but when you have sharp edges around said plastic bag, it's just going to keep leaking and making a mess. I'll deal with that in a minute. Damn. Okay. You guys can probably already tell in the video, at least some of you, you guys that are familiar with this saw. See if I can get this bar unwrapped without diddling around too much. I did want to see how much of the original logo was here. And depending on how much is there, you guys. Fun little guessing game. Oh, yeah. There's not much. The color might be the giveaway. And the style of sprocket nose on this board. God, this plastic is annoying. Okay. okay. So we'll see what's left of this. Up through here. A little bit. That style of sprocket nose on the bar. The other side's no better in terms of the the yellowish paint. It's an Oregon chain, so it's been replaced. You guys got any guesses? I 
I'm just hoping it's not too screwed up. Okay. Obviously, I have some concerns about that chain break. This is a fairly clean, well, it was until all the oil leaked out all over it. Fairly clean Pioneer Farm Light. All right, so this is basically a P38 with a different name on it. In fact, I'm not sure I should say basically. I think it it is. But I don't know... Do, 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 do. I don't know Pioneer that well to say that there's no other differences. This time period was when they were experimenting with some of the same ignition systems that Home Light was using and having some of the same problems that Home Light was having. So it's a 58cc. This is a direct competitor for the Super XL. Come on, baby. Oh, you have another washer there. Don't be a shit. Okay. Sprocket doesn't look like it's got any runtime on it at all. I'm hoping you guys can see that on the video. Bar plates are here. Obviously, that oil cap, well, it doesn't like being upside down. I'm assuming there's a duct bill of some sort in there that I can replace. And I'm sure hoping. Man, this thing's in good shape. Those stickers look good. Some wear on the plastic. A lot of this garbage will clean up. Some paint fade, so it doesn't quite match the starter anymore. Or maybe it never did. I don't know. Ah, air filter's loose. What do we got there? What do we got going on over here? Okay. Well, not much. I'm going to assume that was loose because somebody was trying to prime this. Decent filter. Yes, indeed. Now that looks like the factory fuel hose. And while I don't see any penetrations on it right here, it's not connected. So that's a thing. That rotted off. So this is the style that underneath the starter here, you've got a barb in the tank that you got to spin out. So this is pretty cool. I don't know about you guys. I want to hear it bark. without the ignition on. The starter sounds a little bit rough. That spring may not be great. Not bad. She won't run. Carburetor kit. Fuel hose. That's probably all this bad boy is going to need to be a worthy opponent for a Super XL in a yet-to-be-determined shoot-off. I don't know when I'll get to it. It's hard to say not knowing. But I'm super happy to have this despite it coming in looking like rancid hell and really, truly, all joking aside, it's a miracle that UPS delivered this to me and didn't quarantine it. And I actually am not convinced that this isn't a Rebox. 
And if it is a Reebok, then somebody did me an even bigger favor than I already know. So, anyhow, Pioneer Farm Light. Again, basically a P38. Maybe exactly a P38. I don't know. Very complete, very nice. And I'm looking forward to doing a video of it running. Okay, I couldn't let the video end there on a negative note. So, here we are again. Here, what the hell? How often do you see somebody working on a farm light on YouTube or, well, anywhere for that matter? Got it cleaned up pretty well. Huh. Did forget to do that up there. WD-40 is your friend when it comes to cleaning old pitch and even the worst layer of uh, oxidized paint can be cleaned up pretty nicely. That's what I've done so far with just a lot of this. Not all of it. I didn't get to the, the tank before I flipped the video on, but see that's pitch and that's pitch. When it's really hardened you're going to need a little more than just WD. But if it's still soft at all, it's going to mostly come off. It's like that's a little crusty, so I'll chip it. That's a little crusty, so I'll chip it. No harsh chemicals. See that? If you need a little more, That is doing wonders to clean up this paint. Next step will be a little coat of wax, but look at that. That residue is oxidized paint. So, and that works on plastic too. Where I look on this, so little bits of pitch and junk and stuff. All right, some good news. It's a blue coil that works, which is actually not as uncommon as some of the folks on the forums and on online like to say. It's not that uncommon. The right hand guard is unbroken. That's somewhat uncommon. I think the muffler wants a coat of high temp paint, but I'm going to worry about that later. Starter is a Paul style starter, so I'm not sure what the noise was I was hearing, other than those are heavy springs. And that may have been all I was hearing. Those springs are twice as heavy, if not three times as heavy, as a home light. Starter is nice and smooth. I was assuming that this had a 330 style starter in it because the old. Uh, all right, I'm going to get goofed here, but I think the farm saw and the farm saw too both had it. So I was just assuming it had carried over here, but this is a more standard Paul style starter. Fuel cap is gray and the oil cap is black. That means this has been replaced because the original one swelled up or leaked or both. Not terribly surprising. That is a well-known issue with these. I've seen these caps sell for a pretty obscene amount on eBay, even used. Big disappointment so far is while it looks complete, there's no guts. There is nothing in there at all for the chain brake. Now, that doesn't prevent us from using it uh, and all of that, but I really, especially on these damn pioneers, like to have the brake guts complete just just because, because that's how I like them in my collection. So I'll have to do a little snooping around and see what I can find there. At least from the outside, you can't tell. That's cool. So remember I was saying the fuel hose goes into the tank on a barb fitting. You can see that right there. There is some sealer around that. Now traditionally I haven't had a lot of trouble with these and I'm hoping that this isn't the time that it's going to start. Oh yeah, that hose is rotten. Still on the nipple here. But I do believe that is original hose. 
So that's kind of interesting. All right, I think that's a half inch. I think. It is. All right. We're going to try the rattle gun. And I'm going to try tightening it a little bit first. Now loosen. Like butter, baby. I don't know, you think it would have picked up fuel? I could be fine. And that actually wasn't epoxy. Huh, this later one, that is a uh, plastic gasket of some sort. I'll be damned. I'm learning a few things here. God, that is so nasty. That hose is rotten. Once this is jacked up, it's worthy of taking a peek down through and making sure that it's open. This one is. And that's also just aluminum, so don't go ape on it. Now, is there remnants of the old filter in this tank? And I don't have any idea. I'm not getting any black on the screwdriver. I don't think it's down there. I'll go super high tech here and bust out the old cell phone. It is down there. Aha! Now how is it that I couldn't... Oh. Maybe because it's that nasty. Huh. I was going to say that I didn't think that this had uh, had fuel rot in the tank. I am reassessing that opinion. Okay. There's a little bit more. And whether there's a filter down there or not, that I still don't know. Now this stuff is dangerous to use because it can screw up paint. If you expose it for too long. So I just won't expose it for too long. Or at all, if I could avoid it. And if you couldn't read package, yes, that was acetone. filter. And B. Okay. Well, I'm not going to go Easter egg hunting for it. If it's down in there, it's wedged pretty good. Damn it. I thought I had avoided that. See it run down the front. Hopefully, it didn't do too much. God damn it. Ah, yeah, I'm gonna have to use some paint polish on that. Damn it. So, that's the risk. Even when you think you're being careful, sometimes you aren't. Damn it. That was stupid. That was really stupid. Really, really, really stupid. Yeah, 
to take more paint off of this than I ever wanted to to fix that. Damn it. I guess on the plus side is it got the hose out. Yeah. Whoop D F and do. Should have just left the hose and let it dissolve in the fuel. Okay. That sucked. thinks I haven't used it for a while. That's probably right. It is probably right. do that too many times so uh, start wearing it and paint. That was really dumb. Don't do what I did there. Alright, back to business. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Alright, so I don't have an existing fuel hose to go from, but we know that fitting is up there comes down to about there. Yeah, we'll go right about there just so we can. We don't need a cut end. A slash cut, I should say. Alright. We are gonna do this like so. Because if you don't put it on your barb and fish that end out of the tank, you just put a fuel filter in there. What I've found is when you spin this in, it wraps that hose up into a big old knot. And that's not cool. Pun intended. So what I have found better is to get the hose in place in the form that we're doing right here. Pull it up and get it all the way in and then if you can I think it pays dividends to start the threads by hand. I think I've got it there. Yeah. Yep, I do. Okay. Now we can go for the Titan. Good enough. I don't need to destroy it. There. Now it's not a mess. Now I can slip the fuel filter on and drop her in the tank. And we don't have to look back. Okay. There isn't much left in the bottom of the tank. But I've never really been one to run an engine on acetone. Plus, look at all of that that we got off the bottom. And on the new hose. Oh no. Okay. All right. How much do you all feel like gambling? Or 
or do you just want to take that carb off and check it the right way? It's right here. Would almost be dumb not to. Just a till it's an HS. That'll give us a chance to inspect the uh, intake manifold. These saws were notorious for having a cracked intake. does too. And I think, wow, that might be why this thing was parked. I'll be damned. I'll bet that was why this one was parked. Let's see about this tire frame real quick. I'm going to move it and see if it moves back. does. Yeah, I think it was this intake manifold. So that's interesting and irritating, if I may. Let's just see here. Are these quarter inch that's actually disappointing I've come across this before but I was hoping I might get away with it this time because this thing is such a low hour saw it appears there's no such luck It came off in one piece. There's a plus. Okay. I'm virtually certain this thing would have air leaked the ever living shit out of it. Sorry. I need a, a pointer tool that isn't covered in wax. I'm making a video. Can I help? Well, there's not much you can do right now. Somebody stayed home sick from school today. Mm -hmm. So see this crack out here? And the corresponding crack in there. Hopefully you guys can see that. And it's the same thing on this side. Can I see? See those cracks? Oh, yeah. Now normally I would say that's from over-tightening. Maybe that's just stress of having the carburetor hang off the back with no rear support. I honestly don't know. But, I'm going to have to go through and try and patch this up without making a big old mess out of it. And I think that means my friend JB Weld. Because, the, yeah, the odds that one of these on eBay is going to be any better than this. You're taking a real gamble. So... I'm going to do a little JB Weld patching on this before we go any further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I can't feel as much with those. Okay, so the good news is I think this is going to work. Uh, you can see that I spread a nice layer right across here, a heavy layer, and worked it into the crack. Hopefully the video is picking that up. You can see that that crack is filled with it. Same thing on this side. Whoops, sorry. Same thing on this side. Really worked it in good. Got a good layer there to stabilize this. On the inside, I've got those cracks filled. You can see that one there looked really good. That one's not bad. Do that. Oop. Gobbledygook one more time. What I'm trying to do is keep it smooth inside of the carburetor. Or the fuel passage area there 
and then let it be a gobbledygook mess on the outside. But I want those cracks filled because it can leak right around those barrel nuts or whatever the hell those are, a nut cert, whatever they are called. They can leak around there. So by filling it inside of the throat, the way I have, that should do it. That should take care of it. The bad news is, this has got to set up for 24 hours, so there's not a whole lot more that we can do. Now we can go ahead and put this back on. Get the bottom started first. Because if this flexes at all during installation, and I don't know why it would, but if it does, I don't want that JB weld to set up and then, and then crack it, bless you. I want to get everything snug before we rip anything down too tight. anything distorted there so I'm gonna let that seal up <clears throat> that'll give me oh, I forgot to put my ground wire in that would cause the kill switch to be non-operational That'll give me time to go through the carburetor. This is just a Tilly HS. What is it? One forty-seven. Yep, HS one forty-seven. So that's not far off of what a home light would be. Got the idle screw down low. You can see there's an extra boss there instead of out the back, because out the back would be more convenient with the air filter off but this way you can snake up under there with the air filter on and actually get it taken care of so anyway i'll go through this and then uh, remember how to reset the uh, throttle linkage too because that just rolled over on me when it shouldn't have cute oh there it goes I don't think it's disconnected. But I don't know. Anyway, let this set up and we'll come back. All right, so it's back together, ready to rock and roll. I did add the chain brake guts in I had from another saw. Let me tell you, or another cover I had on hand, but let me tell you, that is not a fun job. <clears throat> the spring, and the band has to be installed into this little slot right in here. And oh boy, is that not fun. I did some good cussing last night. Because by the time, I don't know, what I decided to do was get, use the roll pin and mount all the other linkage first and then get that spring in place. I don't know how you'd ever get that lined up and get this roll pin in there with spring tension on it. I don't know. I don't know how they did it from the Pioneer factory, but whew. Not Fun. Let's see if this thing runs. There's a good sign. doing here folks that was basically where I'd expect it
playing nice. Well, this is fun. a proper spark plug makes. That was one thing I had not checked. That was a mistake. It had an R... What the hell was it? It was a resistor plug. Oh, it's already at the bottom of your garbage can. I'm not digging it out. But it was the wrong heat range. It wasn't tight. And it was a resistor plug. I know that some of these things chainsaws from this era, I guess I should say, came with resistor plugs. I do not use them. I find them to be a pain in the ass, and if I see an R on a Champion plug, it goes right in the trash can. A fresh CJ6 made all the difference in the world. It started right up. So, anyway, our repair on the intake manifold apparently has done the trick. This chain is a piece of trash complete and total piece of trash. It's filed at completely the wrong angle and it's a chipper chain so I'm not going to be uh, using that. Say hi to Katie as she walks through the schmook. This thing's obviously got some residual garbage in the bottom of the fuel tank that's burning off but a Pioneer Farm Light is going in the collection and I'm happy to have it. 